And we are live. Don't worry, we didn't update the Windows computer because if that was the case, we would not be live right now. Oh, actually, we should say that we're late because we updated our Windows. <laughs> How does that sound? It's a lie, but uh we can actually skip topics and we can do a uh how to block windows 10 updates from happening on your computer oh sweet that's a real thing yeah all right let's show the people company. oh yeah that should be fine so if you hate windows updates windows 10 updates i don't recommend doing this because then you'll never update your computer but because then you have to do it manually yeah settings you can update security and then there's then... the password to the computer now oh yeah <laughs> see i also have updates here so if you click on, I believe it is this one here. If you click it a bunch of times, come on. Oh, it's not going to do it because I have, oh, it's advanced options. It's advanced options. We're working on it. Uh, One of these here is download updates over metered connections. Make sure it's off. Sometimes it's on. Make sure that's off. Then it's easy. Then you go over to your network settings. That was really fast. Your network right here. Doo -doo. And then you go to the network options, change connection properties. Yes. And, set and then metered. metered connection on. It won't update if it's a metered connection. You just told it it's a metered connection. Now it won't update as long as you stay on that internet. Then if you take it to a place and you get on their internet, you're going to have a thousand updates. <laughs> <laughs> Rip Starbucks internet. <laughs> but that's how you can disable Windows updates. Okay, cool. I didn't if know you, that was a thing. If you want to. That's a great way to start off a new show is with a uh, tech advice. <laughs> we have some other, uh, well, news? no, not really. We have some other news. Emphasis on the other. Some. <laughs> oh, or that. <laughs> well, the first one wasn't news, so this can't be other news. Because oh. that would imply we'd... Huh. I, I feel like I'm not live here. Uh-oh. You're not live? Let's see. Oh, one of mine's live. Two of mine's live. All three of mine. Do the hey, I'm live. There you go. What do you know? I only know we're live because you have your hat on backwards. Like a cool boy. We've got a few topics. Emphasis on the few. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we I have... Feel... It's about as many topics as last week. <laughs> Give or take, yeah. A lot of these are Jacob's opinion things. One of them is my topic. <laughs> Good job. Uh, Apple teaches its product owners how to clean their device. It's uh, kind of sad. And they actually name brand names, and it's kind of curious. Uh, Behringer, uh, the audio company, oh, is making Behringer. a free DAW, which is like audio editing. It's super cool. Okay. And it's free. That's the cool part about that one. Yeah. <laughs> iPhone 9 has been announced. It's so weird. <laughs> which is super weird. Oh. iPhone was doing so good, too. <laughs> Their numbering schemes were pretty good. They had X, which, you know, yeah, they had like 10. Three, that's fine. 3G, 4, 4S. I mean, like, that's still pretty good. Yeah. They didn't just jump numbers. Yeah. Was, well, until now. Decimals. <laughs> yeah. Uh. School tried to make an app where students could do school from home. Students tried to find a way around it. Almost successful. It was really close. Even cool, though. <laughs> and then Devs 1, Data Miner 0. This was an Apex <laughs> legend. The Devs beat the Data Miners. We'll talk about it. Yeah. And I got three things I want to talk about if our show ends up being 10 minutes long. <laughs> Which, Which it will. <laughs> I don't know where... We're halfway through 10 minutes, and we're doing pretty good so far. Sweet. I haven't made it to the first topic. Lunch is Apple teaches its users how to clean their phone over at Mac Rumors. Ooh. It's super curious. Apple today updated its support document on cleaning Apple products with information that confirms it is okay to use 70% isopropyl alcohol wipe okay. or Clorox disinfecting wipes for the purpose of cleaning germs from your devices. I feel like it's a really long sentence. That is all one sentence. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was curious because they picked name br name brands. Yeah. I'm not sure if saying isopropyl alcohol, because I'm, I'm 
I don't think ice purple is a brand. No, it's like it's just normal rubbing okay. alcohol. And 70% is pretty common. Yeah. I think I use the 85 or 90. Yeah, there's definitely 92. Yeah. I think it's the 92 that I use on all my stuff. Okay. I think I've heard that 70% dries better because having extra water helps it dry, which is kind of weird. Okay. But actually, that might be something for you to look into. Because yeah. I'm assuming that's the reason you use rubbing alcohol is because it dries off quickly. Yeah. And then I also use the air compressor to dry it off. Uh, that works. So I, I wipe it down and just blow with the air compressor. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure it's good. It's clean air out of the air compressor, too, which is why I like it. Yeah. It's that it's filtered. But that is interesting that they uh, name name brand Clorox. Hashtag sponsored. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, that was all I wanted this article yeah. for. But this is coming because of all the coronavirus stuff. And guess where some people still use their phones to call? So, here's so a curious question. having their phone up to their head all the time, I mean, maybe you want to wash it. You might not be able to do this on a day, but average week, how many times does your, does your phone touch your face? Probably... A about <laughs> maybe on average one or two like if not less okay and that's a week yeah Ooh. basically very rarely because honestly rarely call on the thing yeah and sometimes when i do touch it it's like when i'm doing something with one hand like i'm holding a drink or something and trying to do something with my other hand on the phone. And, and I can't nose. touch this button. Yeah, yeah. When the button's like far away. Yeah. And then you just tap it with the nose. Yeah, I know that feeling. But uh, other than that, like if I'm holding something, even when I'm calling it really, you can really hover. touch it. Yeah. Okay. So I probably make. I don't do this, yeah. which I know some people do, especially with older like landline phones. Yeah. You know, my landline, I'll do that all the time. But I'm also on that all the time. Yeah, so you can yeah. work on computers with your hands and then talk yeah. on the phone, yeah. I would say with my phone, though, I probably call on it. So it's either an extreme of one or the other. Either I'll call it, I'll use it zero times that day, so I'd be on the landline all day. Okay, yeah. Or I'll use the cell phone almost strictly. Okay. I'll use it like 12 times in a day. Gotcha, yeah. Like today, I think I used it three times. Okay. And then I always have to push it with my ear because of I have bad hearing at this point. Okay, yeah. But, you know, never hurts to wash it off unless your screen's cracked like mine. Or <laughs> mine. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> but. Cool. So, Behringer. I don't know how much you do with Behringer products. Um, basically, I've never heard of them in my life. Really? Yeah. I got a lot of them in my garage downstairs if you want to play with it. Okay. Now, if I'm editing audio, like for a YouTube video or something, or any audio editing really, which is only ever a YouTube video, I just use Audacity. Okay. Because it's free. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the purpose of this is. But. So Behringer mostly does, from my understanding, almost all the Behringer stuff I own, Yeah. is either stuff to plug in like XLR microphones or... It's things to plug in instruments oh, or mics. Okay, and then it's gotcha. also physical mixers to mix the channels. Okay, cool. That's what I know Behringer for. That's what I mostly Okay, so for. more of a physical hardware. Yeah, I know them hardware. only as their hardware. Okay, gotcha. But then um, Music Raider. Uh, Behringer is finally announcing a free DAW, which is pretty cool. Uh, so the simplicity term for DAW is that you can just have a bunch of different audio tracks go into it at once. And then you can remaster it on the DAW. Okay. Or you can make music in it in okay. some cases, which is what – this looks like that's what that's this is going to be. Okay. Uh, interesting, though. Uh, it says it's going to take at least 18 months for it to come up with something that's usable. Okay. Because it's definitely not an easy thing. But uh, I would be super interested in it. So is this something that you think you'd put on a laptop and plug in USB peripherals to and so everything's done? Because it's like with my uh, live band box. I have a live band box. Mm -hmm. And it actually has the, a Behringer mixer in it. It has a 16-channel mixer in it. D uh, hardware. Hardware. Yeah. Okay, so you gotcha. plug 16 XLR microphones. Gotcha. If you wanted. Uh, and then you take a USB out on that. 
plug it into your laptop, and it will record all 16 tracks at individually, the same time. individually at the same time. Oh wow! Okay. O o over. That me. is cool. Yeah. So yeah, your laptop should be able, as long as you don't have a 1922 laptop, <laughs> it should handle it. <laughs> okay, gotcha. But yeah, so I really like Behringer products. And I think it's pretty cool that they're going to make a free one because all the free ones I've tried, terrible garbage. Right now I'm using one that was 70 bucks. It works. I wish I could do more with it. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> The nice thing about free is you can try it out. And if it doesn't work, then you can buy something. You've lost some work. time, but you haven't lost. Yeah. You haven't lost 70 bucks buying something that doesn't work. Yeah. So iPhone, the yeah. releases were iPhone 8, and then there was iPhone XR and X and all those. Yeah. Then iPhone 11, iPhone 11 Pro, iPhone 11 Pro Max, and now they announced the iPhone 9. Yeah, I wonder what the pricing is like here. And that is why they're calling it the 9. Okay. Oh, so it's more of way. a... <laughs> I can't <laughs> click the right link. More of a budget-level iPhone. Yes. For I, the money conscious. What's crazy about it Ooh, is wow. it's not far from our price range. No, it's not. At all. <laughs> Down here at Cut to the Chase, it says, what will it cost? Perhaps around $399, which is about the base price of Any the flagship. 3A. Yeah. But the 3A, you can generally find for less than that. Closer to 300 I think. The Google Pixel 3A, that is. Wow, that is a really good price. Especially when Google and Samsung are coming out with fourteen, eighteen hundred dollar phones. Yeah. Yeah, now I <laughs> yeah. Apple has turned around. I was like, eh, we'll throw out. We'll one swap rolls here. They could phone people can afford. I think that's really the only interesting part about it. Yeah, it could get a lot of people who haven't had the opportunity to have an iPhone. Could get them a chance to get an iPhone and then maybe fall in love with it. Yeah. Which is Probably Apple's uh, goal scheme. <laughs> Not so, a bad scheme either. No. So before I had this phone, I had an iPhone 4S. Okay. I really liked it. Yeah. I just couldn't afford the new iPhone. Yeah. And so I went with Android. Yeah. <laughs> Ironically, I went with a phone $200 less than the nicest iPhone at the time. So <laughs> it was like... <laughs> Almost enough money to get yeah. it. <laughs> like two weeks away. <laughs> just couldn't make it. But no, that right i mean that's a really nice price yeah um if you scroll down to the specs down here iphone 9 specs it says three gigabytes ram which is generally less than what you'd get in a normal old android android yeah. phone most, most of them are, are four six, gigs four six or more yeah a 13 chipset apparently the same as using the current iphone 11 which is kind of surprising actually that sounds good i don't know how good it is but yeah, iPhone 11, I understand, works pretty well. 13 is a decently big number in terms of like <laughs> bigger than most single digit numbers <laughs> in my experience. Now, the screen size is kind of small, 4.7 inch, which eh, some people like it, but I feel like someone who's wanting to get an iPhone is going to want like bigger, the biggest thing. Yeah. Um, eh, kind of a. Uh, they brought the touch button back. So they're using an old screen, I would assume, then. Okay. So is this a touch button on oh, it's the a front? No, that's iPhone 8 picture. iPhone SE picture. They and the have any back of <laughs> Classic. Okay, well. Single camera. Megapixel still unknown. 32 or 42 gig storage. No headphone jack. No headphone jack. But what do we really expect? I don't see those bad specs. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if it has an SD card slot for extra storage. Most people probably won't have a, an issue with 64 gigs. But maybe if you download videos to I'm watch sure later. I've been or... using 64 gigs for the last three years. <laughs> do you have a lot of music on there? Or I have a ton pictures? of pictures and yeah. videos. Yeah. Videos take up a lot of space. Pictures, eh. I mean, obviously, a lot of pictures takes up a lot of space, but... <laughs> I wonder how expensive the uh, latest AirPods are. Are they as expensive as this phone? <laughs> About half the price. <laughs> wow. 
200? Let's see. The original AirPod Pros were 249. And the current AirPod Pro Lite is like 159 bucks. So not as expensive as the phone, but kind of getting up there actually. Yeah. This kind of goes good into my topic of uh, a problem I fixed with my motorcycle. Okay. Using uh, earbuds. So I had the problem yep. that I really liked the headphones I had. Yep. So they're over ears, so they wouldn't fall if I accidentally pulled on the, my uh, cable. cable. So it's a, similar to what a lot of runners use. It goes yeah. over the ear and the actual earbud thing goes in the ear. So yeah. it stays on if you move your head around. Yep. Or if you accidentally pull it, it just pulls off the top of your ears. It's unpleasant, but they stay in. And that's yeah. the important thing. Yeah, especially when you're riding out on the road at 60 yeah. miles an hour. Don't want to get caught in your spokes and rip your head off. <laughs> <laughs> because that's how that works. They're really strong cables. <laughs> the strongest. Uh, but the, I had the problem with that it takes me five minutes to put my earbuds in because I have to move all my hair to get them in. Yeah. And so by the time I get the earbuds in, the helmet on, the jacket on, the gloves on, it's been like five minutes and people can get in their car, go somewhere and get out of their car before I ever crank. <laughs> so that couldn't be a solution. Yeah. But then I can't not use earbuds because it's so loud that my ears get exhausted. Yeah. So I got wireless Bluetooth earbuds. Okay. I kind of wish I brought them up here, but they're pretty much like the AirPods. Okay. Gotcha. But they're just a generic version, yep. non name brand. They were $30. Much cheaper. <laughs> yeah. $30 earbuds. Uh, put them in, put my helmet on. And they stick out my ear just enough okay. that the helmet p keeps them pushed gotcha. in. Gotcha. Makes sense. But they don't stick out so far that when I pull it in, I can push my thumbs on the uh, padding to okay. get it around them. Gotcha. And then they stay in, which is beautiful. And it cuts down the motorcycle noise, which is what I need it to do. And probably having the helmet on there like, yep. actually helps cut down the noise even more. Yeah. And then I found out your phone can dual connect. Oh, it can. D-U-A-L connect to Bluetooth devices. Okay. So I have my secondary Bluetooth uh, motorcycle helmet part on, but it's speakers, With the, oh, and it has gotcha. the mic. Okay. So it has speakers and mic. So if someone calls, I can answer the call, then turn on the Bluetooth headset, wait five seconds, it connects, and then I can talk to them through the microphone of the helmet, and then listen to them through the secondary Bluetooth. Gotcha. And I can just turn it on and off, and it'll auto-connect and disconnect. Okay. And I got the best of the both worlds. That is cool because I've seen the other side of that too, not with Bluetooth, but with Wi-Fi. A lot of these action cameras, like GoPros and such, yeah. you connect via Wi-Fi. Yes. So the camera itself has a Wi-Fi hotspot, and you have to connect your phone to that Wi-Fi hotspot in order to like view the image on the camera or download files from the camera or whatever. Yeah. Or start recording, stop recordings on the camera. But the issue with that is you can't connect to two Wi-Fis at a time. It's super aggravating. Yeah. But this is cool that Bluetooth can actually work with two devices. And that saved me a ton of problems because I was going yeah. to slit down where the speaker wire is and solder two connectors. Yeah, I remember we talked about stuff like that. But you won't believe how thin the two wires are in your headphones. They're like as thin as a hair. Yeah. I mean... It's, it's insane. It's crazy. So I found out that Bluetooth Dual Connect is the way to go. I no longer use my headphone jack at all because everything at this point is Bluetooth connected. Well, you can buy this iPhone then. <laughs> you need so, a new phone anyway. Yeah, I do need a new <laughs> that phone. That broken screen. <laughs> but I finally graduated from my headphone jack on my phone. I don't have a use for it. I definitely still use the headphone jack. Because I actually have some wireless earbuds, but they're never charged. Oh. Because I'm just too lazy to charge them. <laughs> so that's its own issue. That's my own issue. I can see that. Not an issue with the phone. Not an yeah. issue with the earbuds. Just too lazy to charge too them. Too lazy to charge them. Now, does your earbuds not come with a case that charges them? They did, but uh, <laughs> you can't only works case. if it's charged. <laughs> oh, man. That's one of the things I solved this week in my world. Never thought it was going to be a problem to begin with, but... Speaking of things that we've solved in this world... Sponsor spots. <laughs> this video is sponsored <laughs> by Jmart Media and... Nephew Tech. Go us.
We solve problems. The, we solve all the problems. We have yet to find one we can solve. Generally, we cause them and then we solve them, but shh, don't that's, tell anybody. That's how you solve them. Speaking of problems. You know something else that was interesting? Um, About the uh, you can't connect to two Wi-Fi points? This sometimes has, you can connect to uh, data, like cell data and Wi-Fi at the same time. So you can still browse the web when you're connected to a action camera. Really? Yeah. Oh. I think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah. Uh, the that Behringer the mixer thing? that I have, uh, it has three options. So you can either okay. connect it with a Ethernet cable to a computer Oh. for uh, internet access. Okay. Or you can connect it. You can connect like your phone or your laptop to it through a Wi-Fi. So the Behringer yeah. itself will put out a hotspot like an action camera mm -hmm. would. And so you connect straight to it, but then you can't use your phone for texting memes. Or you can set up the wireless in the Behringer, and it will connect to the Wi-Fi network in the house or the building. And then you can text memes and mix audio. So it's like you connect to the Behringer, Behringer's connected to the other network. So your phone can get internet through the Behringer on the other network, but you can also connect to the Behringer because you're connected to the Behringer. That's a super confusing way to put it, but yes. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> That's another cool. So you have shown me that, actually. I have yeah. seen a Behringer thing then. Okay. Yeah. You have all the tablets used to and stuff sit right connect there to it. Before uh, it got taken over to someone else's house. Ah, I know that someone. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of that someone, you try to downvote your apps, your school's app, so you can do school from home because of the virus. It's not going to work. So in case you haven't heard, there's this virus that seems to have originated or the outbreak began in Wuhan, China. Wuhan. So needless to say, they kind of like basically shut everything down mm -hmm. to try and limit the scope of the virus, which uh, honestly has probably helped, but hasn't worked out that great, <laughs> to be completely honest. But one thing they did was shut down schools, closed all the schools. And that means that, I guess, kids can't learn or whatever. So yeah. they have this app for called kids to learn on. Ding All this Talk. Ding Talk? Is that what it's called? It's called Ding Talk. Oh, wow. That is an interesting name. <laughs> Students are meant to sign in and join their class for online lessons. Teachers use the app to set homework. And then they Good go idea. A lot, a lot of my uh, community college classes were online. Similar, not on the Ding Talk app. Like Ninety percent of mine were online. But I mean, yeah, it makes sense to do this. But <laughs> the problem is, it's an app in an app store, not a website. Yes, and one thing, one feature of most app stores is that you can Read upvote it. or downvote apps, or like you know, one star, five star, star it versus one yeah. star it. Same thing, ish. Oh, not really the same thing. <laughs> Kind of the same thing. You can only give one or five stars. That's your only options. Yeah. Well, you can report it too. Oh, okay. Right? Have you ever reported an app? Um, I reported a YouTube commenter who commented on one of my videos the other day. <laughs> really? Yeah, with oh. some nasty language. <laughs> he was talking in Java. He was, yeah. <laughs> Man, he was using bad languages. Um turn really one on my channel but yeah no this was kind of cool that the school released an app on the app store all the students gave it one star is to try to take it off the app store because it'll be reported as spam if all the reviews were one star reviews but uh it, like it was unsuccessful and uh nice try kids looks like you'll be in a school for another day now this last one you have to walk me through okay so it's a lot of french to basically me. video games to bad. play a video game <laughs> you have to download it all right on okay. your computer that unless you sense. have something like stadia blah 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 blah. wow i thought my volume was muted so there's this game called apex legends which is a battle royale game blah 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 classic classic battle royale game okay and one thing that a lot of these Battle Royale games are doing now is they're releasing seasons. So each season they'll release a new character or release a new map yep. or whatever. Yeah. And generally, these things are included in source code, but they're hidden before they're actually released. 
Okay, that makes sense. And what data miners do is they go in and try to decompile the source code so they can read the code or read the configuration files, maybe see image files that are hidden yeah. to see if they can predict the next character that's going to come out. And what data miners did in Apex Legends was they found a new character, a hidden character, <laughs> that they thought was going to come out in the next release. But it turns out the devs put this fake character in there as a way to mislead, misdirect data miners. That's kind of cool. Which is kind of a cool idea. I wonder if they ever put like little hints in there. Just like little like, like little Easter eggs. Yeah, just for the people who work that hard in digging through. The I mean, in this case, they, they kind did. of did an Easter egg, although it was a misleading Easter egg, which is it makes it all that much better. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, eh, Apex is eh, it's an okay game, but it's a battle royale, and I'm bad at shooting games, so uh, <laughs> I've played it some, but generally uh, try to stay away from it. It's fun to play with friends. Yeah, that's without what friends, because you can't play more. solo. And, yeah, you have or. to be in a three Q or two Q now. I think I don't know. Plus, I just don't have time. <laughs> Nine to five <laughs> plus seventeen. <laughs> Need to add some more hours to this week. It feels like that more and more every day, right? Yeah. I literally showed up to this stream ten, five, six minutes, like three minutes before yeah. it started. <laughs> oh. And that's not an exaggeration. Man, so I got that wireless add-on for VR. So I got the HTC Vive. Yes. Not the Pro. The old school HTC Vive at this yeah. point. I got the VR headset add-on. Or <laughs> That's not the right word. Wireless <laughs> headset add-on <laughs> for VR. Uh, I was shocked at how light it was, which was amazing. Yeah. That was the first thing when you mentioned it to me and you said you were going to tell me something about it. The yeah. first thing I thought was that you were going to say it's terrible because it's too heavy. Yeah, but it's surprisingly light. Like, I was even wearing it playing in the gym shorts mm -hmm. and having the battery just in my pocket. Yeah. Not a problem. Yeah. And that's why it's so light is that the battery is not attached to your head. Mm -hmm. The crazy part is the battery is 10,000 milliamps. Wow. So that's like three, four or five four. of these things. Because most phone batteries are about 3,000. Okay. 3,000, 3,500. That's a cheap phone. <laughs> okay. So I think mine's like 32 okay. or 34. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like three times the size of your phone battery. Yeah. Guess how long <laughs> you could play VR before your headset cuts out from no power in the battery? Uh, I'm guessing like an hour and a half or two hours. Oh, you are very close. About two and a half hours. Okay. So you get about two and a half hours for 10,000 milliamps. Because it's a stinking powerful screens inside that thing. Yeah. A lot of motion sensing stuff, which has to pull very often, I would assume. Yep. So you're looking at almost 4,000 milliamps per hour to play it. Wow. You know how long it takes to charge a 10,000 milliamp power bank? <laughs> no. <laughs> if you're not using quick charge, so you're just using like a standard... Do you just plug it in by USB? Yes, yeah, so you micro plug it into USB? A USB. Okay. So if you just plug it into a USB 2.0 port in the front of a desktop, 10 to 12 hours. If you plug it into a quick charge port, though, you can do it in like four hours. So uh, get multiple batteries. <laughs> so I've got two ordered. So okay. I'll have, we'll have three batteries. Okay. Uh, I ordered one more 10,000, and then I ordered a 20,000. I'm going to see if the 20,000's too big. Yeah. And it, even if it is, then we have two 10,000s. Mm -hmm. Technically, you could drain them both and not have anything to play with. Yeah. But, but if you keep the other one charged, like... It's also five hours it's... straight of VR, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> calm down that VR. Your batteries, your batteries might be just out of charging by that point. Might need to take a sleep. Yeah. But I was shocked that it takes 4,000 milliamps an hour. Just yeah, to... that is a lot. Because, I mean, one That's... of these phones, yeah. which has a nice screen... It's not being constantly used the entire time yep. that the phone like is existing, whereas the VR headset is constantly on. Yeah, that's like draining your phone battery in less than an hour is what it's doing for yeah. people who don't understand 4,000 milliamps. <laughs> yeah. So that was like the first thing that really got me, which is why I went ahead and ordered two more wow, batteries. Oh, yeah. That is crazy. The nice part is the batteries are universal. There's two requirements for the battery. It needs to... And the two requirements are very loose. Okay. 
It needs to support Quick Charge 3.0. Okay. And it needs to support 18 watt. Okay. In order to be Quick Charge 3.0 compliant, it has to be at least 18 watt. Okay. So you, <laughs> you have to have one of those two. Gotcha. Otherwise, you can use almost any battery bank, which is really nice. That's not a proprietary battery bank. Thank you, HTC. Oh, Life. wow. So it's literally a battery bank like you would use to charge your phone? Yeah, so you can literally just charge your phone while you play VR if you wanted. Not wow, really. that is really cool. Because it uses all 18 watts. But <laughs> yeah, you could stop playing VR and charge your phone if you wanted. Oh, wow, that is cool. So, so that, it's a lot cheaper than buying one specifically built yeah. for a VR headset. Yep. So I bought one ten thousand, and it was thirteen dollars. Thirteen. Dang! Why did you only buy two extra? And then I bought a twenty thousand, and it was twenty four dollars. Wow! But that's, that's also amazing. right at forty dollars worth of batteries. Yeah. So I yeah. was like, that should be plenty of battery. For yeah, me. because like you said, you're not really gonna be playing it for five yeah. hours straight. But then yeah, so if we have a bunch of friends come over, then we don't have to worry about the batteries. Yeah. And everyone just sitting there awkward. And battery charges. I guess at the end of the day, you can always throw in the cables too. Yeah. Like if you literally run out of batteries. But then, uh, so playing without cables, holy crap. Way better. It is a life changer. The first thing that everyone asked me as soon as I told them, I tried texting you and it kept failing, so I gave up. <laughs> Something else we have to figure out. So uh, first thing everyone asked me was, uh, did you notice any latency or uh, okay. any type of lag? Yeah. Or like, hey, it's not. That would make it's you pretty sick. It's not the same sick. gameplay feeling. Yeah. None. I didn't notice a single difference Dang. in gameplay. It was ridiculous in that regard. So you played baseball, right? Yeah. One thing that I always had a problem with with baseball was moving my feet. Okay. So like when a ball is coming towards you, yeah. you would lean as far as you could, but you would not. You you would always have your feet okay. planted. Gotcha. And that's one thing I had a problem with. Yeah. Playing Beat Saber. In the normal straight view, you don't have to really move your feet. You move them a little bit when you duck. When you lean otherwise, and stuff. Yeah. But otherwise, you really don't move your feet. Yeah, gotcha. Beat Saber with 360, which is a new feature that was just released. I almost want to pull it up. So, so. is it the same game, just an extra like uh, setting or add-on? Or is it a completely new download? And so it's within the same game. Okay, cool. Oh, uh, Let's see how fast we get demonetized on this. So it looks kind of like, uh, no, thank you. Oh, wow. So there's like two courses or something. No. So there's like, they can go all the way around you. Okay. So it's unlimited tracks almost around you. Gotcha. So you'll spin all the way around. Okay. But uh, right now it's staying within like a 90 degree okay, angle. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we'll go all the way around. Uh, having to pick up your feet to spin around in a circle is so hard to do when it's... you played Beat Saber with yeah. your feet planted for a year and a half. Dang. It's like playing baseball without having to move your feet and then being told, you can pick your feet up. They're not glued to the ground. How quickly did your brother take to it? Because he's really good at Beat so Saber. He's out of town. Left oh. this morning. Okay. I got the wireless in this afternoon. Dang. That's going to be crazy to see because he's gotten so good at Beat Saber, but. Yeah. This is. This is almost an entirely different very game different, at this yeah. point. Uh, the, so a couple things I do like about the uh the 360 mm -hmm. and the restrictions the htc vive in particular has yeah is field of view so one thing that developers can do when they're making their 360 levels mm -hmm. is that you're not dependent on anyone's field of view like ours field of views are probably different okay not by much but you probably might see a little bit more than i can or gotcha I see a little more yeah yeah but with the oculus it's goggles and you can see the black border around the edge yeah so okay. the developer knows how much you can see. So they know if you're looking at this note, you can't see a note 90 degrees to an angle of you. So even though you can hit notes in 360, they wouldn't throw a note in front and behind. They would throw a note here, 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 yes. here, here, here. To get you to follow the notes around, but not to like hide notes from you. Yeah. Now, user custom created levels, of course, can do that. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, it's a memory level at that point. Yeah. <laughs> but it was really cool playing these yeah. levels and being guided. Uh huh. And the worst part about it was uh, to take off the VR headset and be facing in the wrong direction. I was about to ask that. How quickly do you lose your sense of direction without the like, cables? Very fast. <laughs> yeah. Especially with your headphones on. 
Yeah. <laughs> when you it's can't like, hear yeah. the speaker that it, the sound's coming from. Yeah. Wow. It's crazy. I kind of want to end the stream and put you in it now. We passed the 30 minute mark. Woo woo. That was more than I expected. Yeah. I mean, we can't read how topics at the 12 minute mark. It's really been only 30, 34 minutes is what mine says. 35 minutes, 14 seconds. Sweet. Record time. <laughs> we did it. We did it, YouTube. Woo! Five topics. Seven minutes per topic. Ish. Ish. So, uh... One day there'll be news, and we'll talk for hours. But until that time, we'll be playing Beat Saber. Let's talk about that next week. Always.